here with an incredible GAA panel, a uh, superb lineup. We have uh, Breach Corkery, uh, 18 time All Ireland winner uh, with Cork, and she has the Duffy Cup here beside her um, after her big win a few weeks ago. Uh, legendary Kerry footballer Colin Cooper, and uh, we also have All Ireland winner, um, football winner James McCarthy from Dublin. Uh, thank you all very much for joining us on the panel today. Um, Breed, if I can start with you, um, Breed, you have a very strong farming background uh, yourself. Can you actually just tell us a little bit about um, about your farming background? Um, so I suppose uh, I was born into uh, farming. Um, I tried a couple of jobs in between, um, but I suppose uh, maybe about six, seven years ago, um, my husband started working for a farmer down in Cork. Uh, never milked cows before um, until we went to New Zealand. Uh, when he came home from New Zealand, he said he wanted to get into farming. Um, so that we started off with that. Um, he was just kind of work, as a worker, and he built his way up through the farming structure with Mike Bateman. Um, so now they're in a partnership together. They're, he's doing share milking, so I, I joined him about four years ago. Um, I suppose I've, at the moment I'm on a more cushier job at the moment. I'm working for the bank, but um, you know, hopefully it's sometime soon I'll, I'll get back to it again. And Breach, at the, the pinnacle of your training, you would be milking a, a lot of cows and then running off uh, and doing your training in the evening. Uh, can you just tell us about that and how you manage it? Where did you, how did you balance all of that? Um, so I suppose we're working on a farm with, well, it's about 640 cows now. Um, so I suppose get up in the morning, milk the cows, do your day's work and run out the door as fast as I could, maybe around six o'clock in the evening after the cows. Um, that was probably most days. Uh, you know, you'd have your days off and stuff like that, but it was grand. Um, it was just routine, just stuck to it, just did it. And, you know, I think maybe after a bit, it took a little bit of a toll on me. Um, I suppose uh, 2017, I took a year out um, from Camogie and football. Um, I suppose it was just to do with the farming as well. I had just, you know, a li no time to myself. So maybe that was a little bit of time where I needed a little bit of a break. So um, it was hard while I was doing it, but I struggled away for the, the three years at it, and, but I really enjoyed it. Huge commitment on both sides because work and working on a farm is not you know a nine to five. You have to you're available twenty four seven for that. Um, so it was a challenge at periods where you were trying to balance your, your training and your matches with your with your commitments. Yeah, I suppose it was a huge challenge. Um, you know, you just go to training and you milk the cows first Sunday morning, go to training, come back and maybe have to feed the calves then, um, and then you're back into back in home for the supper and then you're back out the door again for more milking. So, you know, there was a lot of change in the clothes. I felt that's all I was doing was going from gear to good clothes to old clothes. Um, but, you know, it was it was hard to balance it, but I did, did my best I could and I enjoyed doing it. So it was, you know, once you enjoy doing something, you're not, you're not too bad. And was it an advantage to you? Do you find that it's an advantage to you on the pitch? Um, I suppose, you know, I, I wouldn't be a big person for the gym myself. Um, I try and avoid it, but I suppose, look, you're lifting tw 20, 25 kgs of bags of ration um, nearly every day, so it's, it's as good as any gym. Yeah. <laughs> and recently you lifted uh, the Duffy Cup here beside us, um, 18 All-Irelands uh, breed. That's an incredible feat. The most successful, yourself and Rena Buckley are the, the most successful GA players of all time. Um, how does that feel? Um, well, I suppose I, I'd consider probably Rena the most successful, I suppose, you know, but um, I suppose this year really for me was, uh, I, we, we had a baby boy in March, um, so I suppose we just, my, my achievement for this year really was to get back into the training field and um, get back fit as, as much as I could. I suppose a little bit disappointed I didn't get much, I didn't get much time in the camogie, but it was great to be back to, with the girls. Um, and you know, if I helped in any way by pushing girls on, you know, that was that was my contribution to the year, and um, it was just great to get back fit. And I suppose I'm, we've club championship coming up now in the next week or two, and um, you know, I think without that car training, I suppose I wouldn't be as fit either. So I'm taking every every advantage as I can. And it's been a great year for ladies GAA on the camogie and the football side. And I think it really showed in the finals there in the last few weeks. There was big numbers, big crowds showed out, turned out in Crow Park. Um, where you, how did that, what, what was your response to that? Um, yeah, I think um, it's fantastic all the, you know, it's, it, it's definitely working its way up. Um, you know, the, the ladies football is only about 43 years old. It's not that old and the attendance of over 50,000 was incredible. Um, 
you know, I'd love to have experienced playing in front of 50,000. Um, you know, I was talking to a few of the Cork girls from last Sunday and they just said it was unbelievable to play in front of it. And it's just fair play to the the ladies football for really pushing it. And I suppose their sponsors, Lidl and um, TG Cahar have an awful lot to do with it as well. You know, they're great for showing the games and stuff like that. So. You know, I think ladies football and camogie, they're really on the way up. Um, the camogie attend attendance was up again this year, which is fantastic as well. So, you know, they just keep need to put, keep pushing each other on and um, hopefully it'll keep growing. Yeah. And uh, Colm, on the, on the football side, um, how would you describe uh, the championship this year and Kerry's performance in the championship? Yeah, well, Kerry's performance wasn't so good this year, but we... I, I possibly thought that that might happen based on the seven new players coming into the team. Now, we, we would have thought that Kerry might get to the semi final this year. The letdown was probably how they performed in the Super 8s. It was the first year of the Super 8s. Nobody really knew how it would take off or not. We probably didn't see the fireworks that we, we, that we hoped this year, but um, look, I think James and his team, dub, the dubs are setting a fairly high benchmark for everybody. Um, it's difficult for the Kerrys, the Mayos and everybody else and Tyrones and Monaghan's to catch up. So I think at the moment we've won, we've an outstanding team, a team of a generation that might go on to be one of the best teams ever in the GA who've just come along and they're fi they're, it's, everybody else is finding hard to come through. But I will be positive about Kerry coming through because they've had a lot of underage success. But I, I, even next year, I think it's going to take two or three years for, for Kerry to really get back to the top level. Um, that's what we're hoping. They're looking for a new manager at the moment as well. So there's lots of lots of talk in Kerry of what's going on. But um, Do you think that was the right move? Yeah, well, t time will tell if it's the right move. I think Eamon had been there six years and six years in a job like Kerry is a long time because there's so much expectation and pressure and um, I suppose there's, uh, there's just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of expected, expectancy in that job and patience is probably not in our vocabulary in Kerry. We want success the whole time. Um, so I think it's probably the right move to just freshen things up. Um, who the next person's going to be, I don't know. There's talks of Jack O'Connor, there's talks of Peter Keane, who was the under-17 manager. There's talks lately of Morris Fitzgerald taking on the job as a manager. So um, I think we'll know in the next two weeks, and I think people are anxious to get back on the pitch and prove themselves and try and catch up to these guys again. And I know the gap is getting wider and wider and Dublin are doing. Um, it's unbelievable, it's so remarkable uh, what Dublin have achieved uh, to date. Uh, do you think, Colm, that is there need for, for two tiers? What's, where do you stand on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's, probably, it's probably getting to that stage. I know lots of people have different views in counties that they all want the chance of winning the All-Ireland. But if we continue along the same path that we're going, we're going to continue to have mismatches and teams have been beaten by 20 points. And I'm not sure that's the way forward for the GA. So I think we are looking at a tiered system um, and how it's going to work. People talk about should we have four groups of eight but I don't think that, I think the gap is still, still too big there. So I think we are working our way towards a tiered system. Um, and quite often people say to me, the National League is probably more enjoyable now for, for fans watching it. It's probably because people are playing at the right level that they should be playing at. You know, we four different divisions, the Division One teams, like the games are much tighter and more competitive probably than, than the championship. So I think we're going to see, see that, maybe not next year, but certainly in the next two or three years where that tiered system will be introduced. For, for, for the better, I think. Mm -hmm. James, um, an unbelievable year by Dublin again this year. Um, did you, you had achieved what you set out for at the beginning of the year. Um, can you reflect back on your performances? Yeah, no, look, look we, we had a great year in the end. We, we obviously won the Ireland again. Um, it was obviously a different year for GA, a lot of change. Super A's came in and we we're, were really excited about where we were. It was a new challenge for us, finally get out of Coe Park, play a tough championship game away. We, we, we loved it, you know, and we hope we, we get to see more of that in the coming years. Um, but yeah, in the end, we were, we were delighted how it worked out for us, you know. Do you still view every game as a challenge? Because you're always the favourites. You are always the favourites and, um, and you are so focused and do you, is it a challenge still when you come up against uh, bigger teams, the, the Kerrys, the Mayos, the Tyrones, do you still, do you get nervous? Yeah, like, not as much as I used to when I, when I was younger, obviously when you're starting off, it's all new and you're, you know, you're playing a Crow Park where you dreamed of playing for, for a long time. Um, getting a little bit older now, you get a little bit more experience, my hair's starting to go a little bit grey, so, you know, I suppose you kind of, you've been there before and you, and you, you know what to expect and it, 
when there's 82,000 people in the playing the occasion, I suppose, you know, you know, you know, you know what's generally you have an idea of what's coming. Obviously, in finals, you can make the best laid plans for three weeks going into it, and the first ball I'll join in, obviously, everyone's going to have to win, though, you know, that's what happens sometimes. But um, you do, as you go on, it's, it does get easier as you old, you know. And there's huge camaraderie between the team as well, and we've really seen that in the weeks following uh, following your All Ireland victory. Um, you're all very, very grounded. It appears to be very, very grounded as players. Is that something that Jim Gavin has really instilled in the group? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, and I suppose the players are probably doing it now as well. Like, a younger lad probably comes to the team, and if you had a bit of a head on me, be told very quickly, not like you know, kind of rain yourself in a bit, which is a good thing to have. And guys, but guys are looking out for each other, which is more important. And, and you know. Um, my first day down the panel, I always remember the guys that came up to me and said hello to me and, and, and brought me to the panel and you know, gave me some advice. Like Jerry Brennan was very good when I first came in the team. He used to get lift training them and, and just any way like that I can I, I help out lads when they come in, I try to and that's kind of around the group which is very important, you know. And James, what do you think about uh, the comments about uh, an, another tier needed within the championship? Yeah. Look, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to know. Um, I think, I, th I definitely think, like, as Colm says today, if you watch the National League now, it's probably way more. Um, as a team's really enjoying the more, so you're, so you're playing at your level. Maybe that, I'd say that's, we've gone that way eventually. I think the GA is starting to, starting to do that now with the, the trying new teams now, and I definitely see it going down that way. Um, the Hurling was a huge success this year. Maybe not too great so much, but I think it will be very good as time goes on and we start making a few changes. But, um, I, see, I think it probably will, will end up going on that way, and it seems it will, it will be for the better as well. And you already have your eyes on the five in a row. No, 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 no. no. Let's enjoy that. this one for us, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, look, obviously there's a time to look. I think we look. We obviously will be going for that next year, and that'll come with all the all the pressures and under the world, I'm sure. But I'll leave it for a few more weeks, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure we'll see you out there again though next year. Um, a huge thanks not. to you all for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to you all over the next year. Thanks, so much. Uh, thanks very much. And now.